conducts and raceways today. All right, let me just uh, bring it to the full screen. Can I do this? First, I have to. There we go. All right, so um, here are there's a couple of sentences. One is, is kind of a sentence, both of them. One of them is a question here. All right, let's see here. Let's analyze this first thing here. There are many different circumstances that require the use of conduit or raceways when running electrical wires. Where is a raceway? A raceway is structured pathway that uh, in which we would run or install cables so they are protected from the outside elements and there are different types of raceways emt or conduit electrical metallic tubing is a raceway but uh, as far as the raceways um, are concerned there are many different types of raceways so conduit is or emt is just one part of the uh, one form of a raceway all right so let's just read this again there are many difficult circumstances well you know it's a kind of a general statement that was also sometimes we need to run the cabling in conduits or sometimes we need to run the cables in raceways all right that's basically it. What are some of the some of the examples of that? Basically, that's what the question uh, uh, the question asks. Uh, well, remember when I was telling you during the lab that uh, NMD ninety cable non metallic dry NMD ninety and ninety stands for uh, it's rated uh, up to ninety degrees Celsius, and it's non metallic dry, so you could. Um, run that cable uh, on the surface of a timber or wooden structure or wooden framing and we're using those staples those hammer in staples that we have used during our labs so that's okay to run those cables on top of that timber frame timber is wood so um but it's a non-metal because it's non-metallic now if you need to run uh if you have a instead of a timber framing if you have a steel framing uh, that basically provides the skeleton of a building then uh, we can't run that we can't install that nmd90 cable on us directly onto the steel frame <clears throat> so even though it's non metal it says non-metallic but if you want to run one of those on a steel framing you could first install the electrical metallic tubing and inside that tubing you can run that even though it's metallic but uh, it's it's okay to do that uh, or if you run single contactors instead of um, conductors that are enclosed in a cable we can also run single conductors uh, and some of the bigger installations involve just that right and there will be some other circumstances that uh, you would run you would need to run uh, other types of cabling like for example signal or data cabling or uh, so uh, the data cabling is protected from the outside interference or um, quite often if you are running something like uh, it's called uh, optical fiber or fiber optics then the metallic tubing or any kind of raceway protects uh, the um, because uh, optical fibers are fragile way more fragile than copper cabling uh, and uh, sometimes we need that extra physical protection from uh, um, from anything else that might actually hurt um, the um, optical fiber All right and since uh, <clears throat> since optical fiber can transfer or carry a lot a lot of data so sometimes interrupting one of those wires can bring down a whole bunch of communications so um so there is, will be some of the examples of that now two next slides i'm going to go to the next slide first and i'm going to come back to this one here uh electrical metallic tubing right so in short it's called emt right emt electrical metallic tubing and uh, this is well probably one of the most popular ways of um, 
constructing raceways for our wiring. So on the first uh, picture here, we have a um, well, metallic tube um, in which you would run the cables. And we have a couple of connectors here. The one on the far right uh, kind of reminds you of something maybe. Uh, we already have dealt with this part of this connector. So this is the same as the two screw connector that we have used during our lab uh, in order to um, provide the interface uh, for the NMD90 cable that would go into the utility box that we have used. So here's the thread, it goes through the knockout of the box and here's a lock nut goes on the other side and tightens that connector into that box. Uh, now on the other side, instead of having, um, uh, uh, if, when it comes to the other side of the connector, well, you can accommodate all kinds of different things. So for example, this one, the difference between the two screw connector is that this one, instead of accommodating an MD90 cable going in there, uh, uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, we can insert the metallic tubing into it. And here is a screw that tightens that just to hold it in place. And this thing is called a set screw. And the one I'll just I'll, I'll get to the question in a second. Um, and then here is a coupler. So here's a connector that connects the EMT into a knockout of the box to enter a box. And here is a coupler. So, so uh, those uh, usually these pipes come in uh, 10 foot lengths or sometimes 20, but 10 foot are the most popular uh, simply because it's easier to transport 10 feet, length, 10 foot lengths. Uh, and then, um, but sometimes you need to run a cable uh, that is from point A to point B or wherever it goes and the run would be more than 10 feet. So you need to, uh, you need to join a few of those. Uh, and that's what we use. It's a coupler that couples one onto another. So from one side, you enter one pipe, from the other side, you enter another pipe and use those set screws to hold them in place. All right, uh, here is a question here. Previous class went over time, any announcements? Uh, well, the announcements uh, are pretty much uh, what I did uh, before we started the class. Uh, and it was just a light type of announcement. I was just telling you what we're going to cover during this week, which would be the um, conduits and raceways which we're covering right now. And that thing is going to fall into the bending techniques um, because we need to know how to install those. And I'm going to slowly start introducing you to manipulating the pipes. So uh, those pipes or those conduits uh, in order for your installation to be the way you want it to be. All right. So that would be the, uh, the as far as the announcements, uh, not much uh, right now. Okay. So now, so here is the um, metallic tube EMT. Now, here's also something that's called, we're going to cover that in the next slide a little bit more rigid metal conduit. So rigid metal conduit in short is EMT, but it's much tougher. Okay. And also the difference between the just the regular EMT and rigid, which is like another word of tough, um, uh, is that these here can also be watertight. All right, so these are these two uh, basic uh, ones and we're gonna continue with uh, with more. Okay, so here's non-metallic tubing, okay. Plastic, PVC, yes, it is, uh, it is possible to run that as well and it's up to code, no problem. You can, you can run those. And well, you're going to have some different paraphernalia associated with that. Uh, you can have uh, PVC device boxes uh, installed, or you can, um, pretty sure you can uh, install the, uh, that into the um, elect, uh, metallic uh, boxes. However, if you are using the plastic or PVC non-metallic uh, tubing, um, it's recommended that uh, you continue with the plastic or PVC device boxes, unless uh, the situation calls for combination of the two. 
All right, and the, uh, there is the example of a connector. Uh, so there are different connectors that are being used to go into the boxes or couple coupling these uh, as well. Uh, and this one here says no disassembly required. So this is just like a blown up version of a example of one of the connectors that will be associated with uh, with the um, non-metallic tubing. Um, <clears throat> there are many different types of raceways that you can combine into your system. Uh, how do you how do you know which one to use? How do you know what's on the market? Well, you know what? Go to some of the electrical supplier uh, electrical supply stores and talk to the salespeople there. Uh, in the specialty stores, uh, there's a better chance that you're going to meet someone. Uh, who actually has done some work in this field. Uh, also, there's a chance that if you go to regular, um, regular um, hardware store uh, and ask for assistance, and maybe uh, by a chance you're going to get someone, and chances are good that you're going to get someone who also knows, um, because the, who also is in the subject and uh, they can give you a proper advice. However, when you go to specialty stores, they're going, you're going to notice that you will have more variety, more choices. Um, so do not be intimidated that, oh, you know, uh, I need to, uh, hide the fact that I am new to this business or whatnot. None of that. Please do not be intimidated by that. Just go and talk. Trust me, within three seconds, you're going to notice that those guys are going to be happy to talk to you uh, because, you know, you're potentially new customer. That's uh, that's one thing. And the other reason is that they just simply, they're just nice people. That's it, period. All right. So um, uh, quite often there's some new product on the market that's going to uh, to, to arrive. Uh, and um, quite often you just go and talk and they say, hey, you know what, there's something new that came on the market. Check this out, check that out. Uh, how do you do this? Um, okay, to get that, you need this type of connectors for that, blah, 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 blah. They do this thing eight hours in and out uh, all the time. So it's normal for them to answer questions. And the more questions you ask, the more answers you will get and the more employable you will be. All right. So that's uh, that's the motivative speech for this class, <laughs> if you can consider it that way. All right, so let's keep going. So there's an example of a non-metallic tubing, okay? There's also a non-metallic tubing, and uh, well, this non-metallic tubing, you can see it's, um, it's perforated, so it does have some flexibility, way more flexibility than the metallic tubing, of course. Uh, for metallic tubing, you need, to, uh, you need to do some precise bends, uh, in order to accomplish a certain type of a shape. This one here is more forgiving, you, like this type of um, electrical non-metallic tubing. It is, um, well, you can shape it as you go along and you can cut it. it. The installation might not look as nice as this one, but still it's going to be up to code and it's going to do the job depending on situation. Sometimes you would need to use this one and sometimes it's okay to use this uh, or maybe it'd be more preferable to use this one here, okay? Uh, now, uh, it does have some flexibility more than the AMT or the rigid uh, metallic conduit. Now, this also, what's available also is high flex conduit. Uh, I would encourage you to even, you don't even have to go to the specialty stores like electrical supply. Um, you can walk into one of the large local, large department, uh, home hardware department stores uh, and uh, go into the electrical section and uh, see what they have. Just have a stroll around. You might want to talk to someone or you might just go along and just uh, look at things, what's available. You're going to see some of the EMT. Maybe you're going to see some of the rigid conduits there and the paraphernalia that's associated with that, connectors and whatnot, and boxes. And maybe right beside that, you're going to have a section with the non-metallic uh, conduits. And then maybe you're going to have something thrown in like the high flex conduit. Now, this thing is a, a way more flexible than this uh, in some tight spots sometimes it's okay to use 
use that and sometimes it's even better to use that uh, every situation is different um, so uh, use the equipment choose the equipment that you're going to use according to the situation that you are finding yourself in all right now here is a pvc conduit uh, which is also non-metallic but look at it this one is kind of flexible this one is highly flexible and this one is just like the emt but it's not it's just uh, instead of metallic it's plastic on the left side you can see different sizes of the tubing and on the right side you can see a bunch of paraphernalia that is associated with that you can have all kinds of corners t-splitters and mounts and boxes and uh, and whatnot um and uh, the way we are using this one here is we are using a glue uh, to join those. So you smidge a little bit of a well, specific glue that goes on that, insert that into this insert, and well, it's joined. So you better make sure that everything is cut to length. Uh, so, but the beauty of that, you can fit that before gluing. And then once you have the whole shape of the whole conduit, then you can just uh, start uh, smidging glue on the endings and join them, right? Uh, so here is a PVC. I just want you to know, uh, just to, to, I just want to bring your attention to what is available. And I'm not going to show you everything. It's impossible for me to show you all kinds of raceways that are there, but I'm going to show you the most common ones, right? And of course, they come in different thicknesses or a different diameter, different sizes. The more wire you need to pull in, the bigger, uh, the bigger conduit you're going to need. Okay? Uh, they can also be bent. The PVC conduit also can be bent using the handheld uh, pipe benders that are meant for the EMT. It's just a slightly different technique. We are not going to bend the. We're going to perform. We're going to perform some of the bends um, uh, using the EMT just to start you up. I want you to get comfortable with handling the equipment. Uh, in the next uh, next semester, you're going to. Um, from what I could see, you're going to do some of the EMT bending uh, a little bit more complicated as you know. The, the, as you get more comfortable, you're going to get uh, more complicated tasks. Uh, and also you're going to use the same pipe benders uh, in order to bend the PVC piping. And that involves uh, applying a little bit of heat. So once you heat this uh, PVC conduit, you heat it with a heat gun, uh, which is basically like a hairdryer on steroids. Um, and uh, then you can shape that uh, using the pipe bend there um, and using sort of um, inserts, some sort of insert, or, well, all kinds of inserts there. So, so the pipe bends the way you want. So it is also possible to shape those in the same or similar way that uh, we are going to shape the um, EMT, electrical metallic tubing. Okay. Next slide. There's also another thing what's available is flexible metal conduit. So flexible, not just a PVC, not non-metallic, but metallic as well. Sometimes you need to, um, uh, sometimes you need to have extra protection uh, for for the wires that you're going to run, um, and uh, you need. So the the, the PVC, just non-metallic, might not be enough to provide enough protection. <coughs> Excuse me. And you might have to use the uh, flexible metallic conduit. And of course, different type of tubing might require different type of accessories that go with it. So connectors, couplers, and whatnot. Okay. Um, then there is a strut type channel raceway. Okay. Raceway, remember, raceway is a structural pathway for installation for, to, that is used for installing wires or cables or run the cables. So strut is, well, you know, strut, the other word for strut would be the stiff, um, something like that. Uh, strut type channel raceway, all right? So it's channel raceway, okay? Uh, here's the keyword channel. Well, you have, in here, you have two channels, one channel, is to run the electrical single conductors and how many you need, whatever you need, uh, according to the diagram that you're going to have to in, uh, follow. And the other channel here serves for something else. Uh, well, 
no, uh, it will be the um, something that's called extra low voltage. So here, uh, 110 that we're using is considered a low voltage and the data cabling or signal cabling is considered an, an extra low voltage. Sometimes you're going to hear people referring to that 110 that we're using. Uh, uh, well, they're not going to refer to it as anything, but uh, they're going to refer to signal cabling as low voltage cabling. But uh, it's actually considered extra low voltage. The 110 is considered low voltage. And still can kick you, right? <laughs> all right. Uh, even though it's considered a low voltage, uh, one ten can kick you across the room. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> uh, what do we see here in the other channel? We see some sort of uh, well. It's probably that this thing looks to me as either a data cable or uh, or some sort of a communications, uh, maybe intercom cable or whatnot. You would have to look at the box or maybe the print on the side here, but that's my pretty much guess from, from what I could see here. And the other cable here is that looks very much like optical fiber or fiber optics, uh, fiber optic cable. Mm, usually I would not run these two together in the same channel. Uh, simply because the optical fiber is way more fragile than copper cabling. And usually those require uh, extra, extra attention when uh, it comes to protecting it from all kinds of other elements. And if you combine that with other wires in that kind of a channel, um, well, you will have to be really, really careful on how to install that in order for that to not damage physically the, the um, uh, optical fiber. But that's a, here's a picture just as an example that this is a strut type stiff, strut, strut type channel. So you have one channel, the other channel, raceway, which is a way for a cable. Right. structured way for a cable and it also has a cover. Uh, where do we see that? So when you walk around the school, look, take a look at some of those raceways that are on top of our countertops. Sometimes they're on the bottom. Sometimes they even go vertically. They shoot up uh, into the ceiling and whatnot. Uh, so that's basically what things look like. If I zoom in a little bit, uh, maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't, but here is just something that indicates that there is an electrical duplex receptacle right here. And over here, it looks like there are a couple of data outlets or data jacks. So obviously for this one here, the top part is reserved for the electrical wiring and the bottom part of that channel raceway would be reserved for the data or signal infrastructure cabling. Okay, uh, very common um, procedure. All right, now another type of raceway we're going to look at here now is the cable tray. Cable tray looks like a, well, straight ladder put in sideways vertically and on top of that you run cables. Uh, the cable tray comes in um, prefabricated uh, like a Lego type of thing. And sometimes you might have to cut some of the sections and sometimes you just join them like Lego blocks. Um, very, very uh, versatile, um, very common uh, to use uh, while running electrical installations. Now, aside from, uh, from um, prefabricated uh, sections, you can also buy the uh, strut uh, channel sections, which basically they're just like, uh, well, long metal sticks, just like that here, similar to that. And you can cut them to pieces and you can assemble them into the, um, into the channel, uh, not the uh, channel. You can assemble them into the uh, cable trays. Now it is less expensive to buy the strut, uh, channel strut, okay? But if you get the prefabricated, which is a little bit more expensive, it takes you way less time to install that because in order for you to install that using just a strut channel, uh, channel strut, uh, you are going to spend a lot of time assembling that. So are you really saving money? Um, maybe yes, maybe not, all right? You decide uh, what uh, you're gonna have to decide on based on the situation you're going to find yourself in. All right? But it is possible to make, uh, it's possible to make yeah, the cable tray, if, even if you don't have uh, purchased um, 
uh, specific by brand uh, cable tray. Okay? Uh, wire way, right? Sometimes you need some extra protection for the for the cables that you're going to run, and uh, you can buy or put or acquire um, something that's called a wire way. And these are sections. This is just one section. Uh, they come four foot length, six foot length, depending on who makes them and, and whatnot. And it's an enclosed. Uh, it's just like an enclosed. Um, cable tray, sort of. Um, in some situations, you're going to require to install those. Um, last time I had to use that was in one of the hospitals in Toronto area. Um, that um, there was some sort of sensitivity to other equipment that is in the ceiling there and the wires had to be pretty much separated. And the one uh, we used was well, basically wire way and it was used for data uh, when we installed the data wiring there. So we had to do that. Uh, <clears throat> well, there's a little bit of a, not a downfall, not a problem. However, uh, I can, I may, if I may bring you into some sort of, if I give you, if I can give you some, uh, raise some awareness uh, to, wire management or cable management inside those wire ways. The problem with these is that sometimes, it's not with these, it's the people who use them, that's the problem, uh, is that sometimes uh, in commercial environments, uh, there is a lot of, there are a lot of changes that may be, that need to be done. So sometimes some of the wires that were used uh, a couple of years ago, they're going to be replaced with some other wires with different specifications and whatnot. Um, the problem with that is that when people come and they install the new wiring, they do not remove the old wiring from that. And this thing just keeps building, keeps building, keeps building after, and after a few years, uh, you can't even close the hatch here. So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, if I may bring your awareness to, please, whenever you do that, do yourself a favor and whenever you are replacing a wire, remove, take some extra time and remove the wires that are not going to be used, okay, in order to make space for more new wires, right? Um, and that's what that uh, wire way looks in action. So these are electrical wires being run inside that wire way, but also they can be used for running a different type of cabling, such as Ethernet, uh, optical fiber and whatnot. Okay. All right, bus bar. Bus bar is just almost like a cable tray, except cable tray is just a tray and then you lay the wires on top of that. Now the bus bar has wires already, it's pre-wired inside and you're just joining those pre-wired sections in order to, uh, to accomplish a well, system, whatever you're doing. Um, here is an uh, example of, uh, of a ceiling or, or overhead structure in um, in electrical room. Uh, also, these are popular, the bus bars are popular in um, modular furniture, which is basically the cubicles, all right, that uh, people work in. Uh, those cubicles also need to have power provided. Uh, and sometimes you're going to have the built-in wire way like that. So you can, uh, or sometimes you're going to have a strut channel built in to those on the bottom, to those cubicles. And sometimes you're going to have that modular furniture, the cubicles that are going to have built in uh, bus bars. So once you join those sections in a specific way, uh, you're also joining the uh, bus bar. And quite often the people who are installing the modular furniture, they might have extra training in order to connect those, or sometimes they just provide the structure and uh, the, um, the bus bars have to be connected um, and brought out to, uh, to further by qualified personnel, such as uh, it would be uh, you, know, you after you graduate. Okay? Uh, now, that's the last slide for this section here. Uh, for this um, slideshow, I'm going to bring another one. Um, where is it? Just give me a sec here. 
There it is. Actually, just give me a sec here. Yeah. Week eight. I think just this one here. There it is. Okay. So this one and the one that was just you saw just before are very similar. Uh, I did them in different uh, and, uh, during different times, uh, and some of them, some of this has and it's got lots of repeat information. But there's some info that's included in this one and not in the other one, and vice versa. So let's just I'm going to go quickly over this, and I'm going to jump over to the second one there. All right. So EMT bending, electrical metallic tubing bending. So that's uh, that's that's what we're going to fall into right now. Uh, quick definitions here. EMT, we already covered that. It stands for electrical metallic tubing and some of the definition of a raceway. We talked about that. Uh, let's just go over a little bit. A raceway, sometimes referred to as a raceway system, is an enclosed conduit that forms a physical pathway for electrical wiring. Raceways protect wires and cables from heat, humidity, corrosion, water intrusion, and general physical threats. All right. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, another um, acronym or abbreviation here that used somewhere in this document. So I just, when you see that NEC, that stands for National Electrical Code, that's in the States. Or here we use, uh, where we are, we use Canadian electrical code. All right. Now, uh, as an electrician, you will be required to install EMT as part of your job. The EMT serves as a raceway for the cabling infrastructure. Um, it is part of the bread and butter of your business. Uh, if you are an electrician or otherwise um, well, installer, such as data person. All right. Um, It, uh, some people feel more comfortable than others. However, everyone should have certain types of basics and should be uh, should possess some sort of comfort level when it comes to installing uh, EMT or installing the piping or otherwise raceways. You're not going to acquire that knowledge overnight. Uh, it, takes, uh, it takes some time. So just... Um, if I can say don't panic, it's maybe a too strong word, uh, but uh, I would just say be patient with yourself. There's a lot to intake uh, and you're not going to have that. Nobody gets that overnight, right? So you're going to be exposed to some part of the job one day, you're going to be exposed to some other part of a job the other way. And sometimes you're going to be working as a helper and you're going to watch what the other person is doing. So be patient with yourself, take it easy, you will get it. Okay, so let's keep going with this here. The ability to bend conduct is a requirement for all electricians, all right? No pressure. Basic EMT sizes, electrical metallic tubing sizes, electrical metallic so EMT also commonly calls as 10 wall. Uh, yeah, when you hear the 10 wall, that's basically EMT, right? Because um, it was named a 10 wall because the, the, structure of the pipe uh well where is some pipe here yeah because of the thickness of this wall so it's called tin wall right it's just a popular name for it right uh steel raceway of circular cir circular cross section which is um which is un um which is unthreaded okay there we go unthreaded so emt is unthreaded Okay, rigid, we put a thread on the end of it. Uh, you can thread that. And if, you, if you're in the lab, sometimes you can see the, those uh, red or orange uh, interesting looking things on tripods with oil pans and whatnot on it and some, uh, some things that, uh, that swing in and swing out of it. These are the pipe threaders. <clears throat> you might want to uh, investigate that. We're not going to touch on those this semester. Uh, you might later on. Okay, uh, now, um, so steel, it's a EMT, it's a steel raceway of a circular cross section, which is unthreaded and nominally about, nominally, so it's normally, 
nominally, um, nominal, um, normal, use that word, use those two words exchangeably. Uh, norm, normally they come in two and uh, ten, uh, 10 feet sections, or sometimes you can get uh, 20 foot lengths, uh, but 10 foot sections are, are the most common ones simply because they're easier to transport than 20 foot sections. Available in sizes anywhere from half inch to four inches. Four inches is thick uh, for that. Now, um, the, outside is, the outside of the pipe is galvanized for corrosion protection. And the inside has an approved corrosion resistant organic coating. All right, mouthful. EMT is installed by the use of set screw. We talked about what set screw is or compression type of uh, coupling that uh, uh, connectors. Um, I think there is going to be the, one of the last slides for the neck at the next uh, presentation that uh, we're going to look at the difference between a set screw connector and a compression type of connector. I'm not going to spend on my, too much time now because we're going to cover that in about five minutes or so. Uh, all right, so uh, trade sizes. Uh, there's a table here that uh, it's well, here is the first column uh, that shows you the sizes of the uh, pipes, which is the thicknesses of the pipes. Right, the cross section of the pipes. Uh, so one is in imperial in inches or metric millimeters, and there's some other information that's associated with that. How much weighs per length or whatnot, 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 and the wall thickness and outside diameter, and whatnot. So some sometimes you might want to use that information, sometimes uh, not. All right, but if you want, if if there's one thing I want you to concentrate on, this table is the first column here. There are the sizes of the EMT. So here's a half inch. Uh, inside diameter, okay, uh, and three quarters inch, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four inches. Right? If you want to go more than four inches, then you might want to consider the wire way or cable tray or something like that. Uh, all right, so these are the different sizes of the EMT or a tin wall. Now let's take a look at some of the basic bands. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six basic bands for you here. And the next slideshow after this, which we're going to look at right now, is um, has one more. Right. So there are certain types of bands, and they are uh, they 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 are con they are named certain ways. So stab just a stab or sometimes you call it stab up band is a 90 degree band. It's a stab. That's it. That's all you have to remember right? for now. All right. So then back to back. Well, that's what the back to back band looks like. You enter the wires from the side here and they come out that way there. Right? And if you can notice that a back to back band is well, two stab up bands butted against each other right offset band we're changing the plane of the travel of the conduit for whatever reason we need to do that but that's an offset so here is the surface here's another surface we're jumping from one surface to another uh, and we're creating an offset those two runs are parallel we're offsetting the run of that. So that's why it's called offset band. And there's something that's called a box offset, which is basically nothing else but offset. However, in the box offset, the conduit is mounted onto a box. And there's a certain way of doing it uh, because the connector or the knockout for the connector is not flush with the bottom of the um, of the box. If it were flush, you could just run it straight. But look, it's raised a little bit, three eighths of an inch usually, if the box is positioned a certain way. Uh, then you need to make an offset instead of just bending it out a little bit and sticking it in. No, that would be unprofessional. Make everything look nice and beautiful. Box offset is used for connecting pipes in the box. And here is sometimes you need to overcome an obstacle, um, like, like a pipe, another pipe or whatnot. And it's enough just to use something that's called three saddle, three point saddle band. So three points, here's one point, here's another point right here. 
And here's a third point. So band here, band here, and band here. Three point saddle band, all right? That's what it's called. And then of course, well, obviously this would be a four point saddle band because you use four bands. Here's band one, two, three, and four bands. So it's a four point saddle band. Sometimes you need to use that type of a band and sometimes you need to use that type of a band depending on the obstacle that you need to overcome. Um, and also you could see that uh, the four point saddle band is nothing else as two offsets. Okay? Just have that in the back of your mind. All right. Pipe benders, basic benders. Here's an EMT bender, and here's some that's it's also an EMT bender, but it's called a hickey bender. See the 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 here's the shoe that um, that is being used for bending pipes, and it has certain diameters, so you can pretty much use most of that for most of the bends. But sometimes you need to bend the pipe to get into some tight spots, and this just won't do it because the diameter of the bend diameter is just too big. So sometimes you need to use something that is going to help you with some tight bends, and that's called a hickey bender. Okay. Uh, basic two types. There are different brands, but the the some of the most popular ones is the ideal pipe bender by ideal and pipe bender by Klein uh, or Klein. Um, well, <clears throat> which one are you going to use? Do we need to have one? Uh, no, we do. Um, um, there's a question here do we need to have one? I would recommend that if you're serious about that, I would recommend and start gathering some of the tools. And because these are not cheap, there's a, they're like, um, uh, one of those is about uh, 100, 100 some dollars. And uh, this would give you just one thickness. So if you want to bend the half inch pipes, you need to buy one. And if you need to bend three quarter inch pipes, you need to buy another one. So there goes another hundred dollars. So you're not gonna buy the tools uh, all together in one shot, uh, but uh, look for specials, look for, you know, and just buy one by yourself. Thing. That's if you're serious if pursuing career in that. Um, but you don't need to buy this for this course because we do have those in class, okay? We have enough of them for you to use. Uh, they are hanging, if you, next time you walk into the class, look at the stairwells that go into the top cubicles and, the, and on the side wall by the stairwells, they are just basically hanging there, ready to be used, a lot of them, right? So don't worry about it, don't need to have it. But then again, what I said. Now, uh, we use the Ideal ones by Ideal. Ideal is a brand. They also have uh, another choice. Some electricians choose to use the Klein. It's a personal preference. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, some people like this one, some people no difference between the one. There is certain difference where you use them, slight subtle difference, differences, uh, but uh, you're going to decide which one to use and which one you're going to be more comfortable with. I do have two of those. I bought them for my personal use and I'm going to bring them just, just so you could see one and the other. Okay. Uh, all right, the marks on that. Here are them some degree marks, and here's a star, teardrop, and arrow. Now, I'm going to skip this part right now because it's explained in more detail in the next slide. We're just going to just about to open. I want to bring your attention to this suggested videos. These are links, all right? So once you download the presentation, which is going to be available in a few minutes, uh, click on some of those and just, just watch those videos just to have some sort of idea. Now, you are not going to learn how to do that, but you're going to slowly introduce yourself into the idea of pipe bending. And well, the only way to learn how to do this is by doing it. You got to do this. You got you to gotta put your hands on this and uh, experience the whole experience um, with your own two hands. But this will help you to get some, to, get, to have some, some sort of idea uh, of what you're, uh, uh, what you are against or what you're working with. All right, so here is another, uh, we, yes, we do have time. Um, a few, a couple minutes there for the, uh, for the other one slide. Here, you see um, what number lab are we going to do pipe? It's going to be the one after that. 
the next lab right now for the next two weeks is going to be pigtails. We're going to make some pigtails. And this is going to give you some time to investigate the pipe bending. And by then you're going to be eager to bend pipe and you're going to, uh, you're going to actually do it. So here is the shoe, here's the handle. And there's the client, there is the uh, ideal one. And these are, you see those, those degree marks depend and here's a hook you insert the pipe into the hook and then you bend that around that shoe and uh, how how far you're going to swing it out and you're going to see the degree marks uh, if you want to bend just a 10 degrees or 22 and a half it's just it says 22 by 22 and a half uh, 30 or 60 or 90 degrees uh, so these are the marks uh, Pay attention to this thing here. Um, later on, I'll, I'll cover that in a little bit more detail. This is stabs five inches um, to length, okay? Uh, so later on with that, uh, we'll, we'll go over that. EMT, we went over that. Uh, we went over this already for this uh, previous one. Uh, electromechali uh, electrical metallic tubing made of galvanized steel. We already went over that previous slide. Here is the rigid metal conduit and see those things are being threaded. There's a, there's a threaded coupler here, or you can actually put the thread on that. Uh, so that's how the rigid metal uh, tubing uh, conduit is, uh, is, is done. Now, there's also something that's called the intermediate metal conduit. So EMT is a thin wall, is not as rigid as the rigid. Um, and rigid is more tough, but also there is something that's called something between the EMT and the rigid tough one. Uh, and it's also allowed to be installed instead of the where, where, where the situation calls for the rigid metal tubing. So in this the intermediate, uh, the IMC becomes more and more popular as time goes along. All right, uh, now um, electrical non-metallic tubing. Um, there is also a possibility of that, and it comes with paraphernalia of its own. And you can read this thing here. The only thing is that I can bring attention to, it's a, it has a nickname of a Smurf tube because of the color of the tubing reminds the color of the Smurfs. So characters, you know, so uh, that. Uh, also, uh, we went over this previous slide, rigid uh, PVC conduit. We also went over that. We used glue to assemble these things here. And here is the compression EMT connector versus the set screw. Set screw connector is, well, this part here, you insert to a knockout and tighten it with the lock nut. And you insert the pipe in or the conduit into this uh, area right here. And here's a set screw to tighten, to hold it in place. Yeah. Now, as, uh, as far as the compression EMT connector, there is no set screw. You loosen the opening by undoing this nut or the gland ring here, and then you insert the pipe, and then you turn that into tightening it. So the, the opening tightens and the pipe is being held. And usually that is used with the rigid connector. Uh, connect. uh, well, you know, yeah, okay. Uh, sizes, we went over that already. And the basic bends, remember uh, those? These are, again, the same information. Stab up bend, it's a 90 degree bend. Here's a back-to-back -back bend, which are two stabs, back-to-back, -back, all right? Then here's an offset bend. We're changing the plane of the travel. We are raising it, so we're offsetting the run of the pipe. And here's a box offset, which is basically an offset, but on the other side, of, at the end of the pipe, there's a box. So we're making the offset for the purpose of connecting it into the box. Okay, and here's a three-point saddle. We went over that. Four-point saddle, we went over that. And here's the bonus. And here's a kick, all right? So what, let's analyze this picture very quickly here. What do we have? We have a stab just on the same plane and just goes and stabs out this way. But sometimes the box or whatever the, you want to run, it's not on the well, flash with the floor. It's raised a little bit or it could be a wall or it could be whatnot. You can do a little bit kick. So you take it and you kick it. How do you kick it? You put it in the pipe bender and you bend it just a little bit. Uh, and as a result, you get something like a kick. Now, anatomy of a conduit bender of a pipe or a pipe bender. Here's the foot, here's the handle, here's the hook in which we insert the pipe. Uh, 
Here's the shoe, that's what the shoe, and here's a footrest, because if you do the bends on the floor, you press that with your foot and you pull the handle in order to help you. Uh, watch those videos, okay? Uh, now, as far as the markings, we're going to be using the arrow, uh, which is used for offset, because we're going to do offset bend, and we're going to use the arrow. We're going to make some marks on the pipe. We're going to align those marks with the arrow, and we're going to bend the pipe a certain way. Actually, we're going to make it. 10 degrees for the box offset. And then here is a rim or notch uh, locates the center of the three point saddle band. Here is a three point saddle band. One, two, three. If you make a mark right here, and this will be the first band that you're going to do, and if you align it with that notch right here, it is going to be right in the middle of that band. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Uh, as I said, I can talk about it for half an hour, but it's going to take me about three minutes to show you. So uh, I'll show you some of that in the lab. All right. Here is also a star indicates the back of 90 degrees band for back to back bands. If you make a mark on the pipe, align it with the star, you're going to have that distance here and that distance here. So when you make a, when you have a straight pipe, make a mark on that with a pencil or a Sharpie, it's going to give you that distance. So if you want to clear a certain distance, so we want the back to back band to be this way here, this long, you take a straight pipe, mark exactly that distance from here to here, align those bands with the star and bend them 90 degrees, bend the other degrees, and you're going to have the desired length of the back to back, okay? Uh, and there's the degree marks. So we went over that already. And as I said before, hickey bender is used for small bands with short segments is where this thing is too big for those small bands. Now, as just, as, just as a motivation, uh, what's involved in the whole pipe bending thing, uh, I give you a little bit of a video to watch. Um, it's kind of fascinating. Uh, it might raise some of the eagerness for you to, um, to actually enjoy the pipe bending. Okay, so uh, just take a look at that and see what you think. All right, that was the last slide of this thing. What number lab are we doing? Okay, pipe bending. In, yeah, okay, so we already answered that question. Um, right, so the next lab is going to be, um, next lab is going to be, let's take a look at the uh, course plan again quickly. The lab that we're going to have is the pigtails that we're going to have, the lab, lab three, pigtails. And then we're going to do the uh, lab four, which is the box offset. Now, see that thing here? Oops, am I still there? I think I'm still there. There you go. Um, <clears throat> announcements, announcements, announcements. Yeah, here's the lecture, lab three, Pigtails preparation. Click on this link here. It's in the announcements. Watch this video. If you don't, well, you still will be able to do this lab, but it will be very uncomfortable and you will not get the full benefit of the money that you're paying for this course. And if you don't care about the money that you're paying, just uh, maybe you can care about the fact that one day you're going to leave the school for one last time and you're going to be you're going to have to face the world and be so-called employable, find a job. And once you find a job, keep the job in a proper way. Okay. So please, when I tell you something like that, watch those videos. It's a few minutes uh, and it's going to be, it's going to help you a lot with, uh, with some of that. I know there's the, the materials are piling up. We, sometimes we just have to basically squeeze our teeth and just, keep going and do some extra work in order to benefit from that later on. Okay, so that's it for today's class. Uh, and as I always say, um, well, it's Monday, but even though it's Monday, it's 
always, every day is almost Friday. And with this happy thought, I'm going to wish you to, well, what can I wish you? Have a wonderful rest of the week and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you very much, guys.